Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about using the DS1019 Plus as an ideal download station. Now there are so many things you can do with the Synology NAS and so many of these things we can do at the same time but one of the most popular is a download server. That is a NAS that is dedicated to handling a multitude of downloads be the large frequency kind such as podcasts or the less frequent and required kind, just like Torrents, Keep It Legal, Archive.org, check them out, NZB, and more, HTTP, FTP, that it covers all the myriad of downloads. So what I'm gonna to talk to about today is how to download files on your Synology NAS. Let's move over to the DS1019 Plus user interface and get started. So we're back here on the desktop interface of our DS1019 Plus with DSM 6.2. Now, for those that want to download on there now, just like we said at the top of the video, um, it really is painfully easy. And there's a popular method of having all your centralized files in one place it's a great little add-on that most NASes have. If you want to take advantage of stuff like this, whether it is that you're going to be downloading torrents, which you should keep legal, and I'm gonna tell you one way to do that, or FTP downloads, or just general downloads where someone sends you a file and you want to download it, rather than download it on your local device and sending it to the NAS, it's very, very easy to get the NAS to do the downloading for you. The first thing you need to do is go to the package center, and when you're there, find a free application called you know, rather no messing around, Download Station. Once you open up the Download Station application, it gives you a very, very user-friendly interface. Sorry about the delay there, that's my GPU going mental because of the screen recording software. Don't worry, it won't be that slow for you. And the Download Station application is really that simple. There's loads of options here. There's even a BitTorrent search area that we're not gonna talk about because again, we wanna stay as legal as possible. But remember, that if you do want to download files, and something I've mentioned in previous videos, and I will highlight strongly once again, I cannot recommend the Internet Archive enough. It is a fantastic source of media, files, PDFs, music, everything. There is some incredibly vintage, phenomenal stuff here that I cannot recommend enough that you guys check out. Also, it serves as a great way to show you the multifaceted ways to download um, files on your DS1019 Plus, or indeed any Synology NAS. So say we wanted to look at video files. We'll click on the video icon at Internet Archive, and say we're gonna go for some old school TV. For those that watch my media streaming videos, uh, you'll know that I downloaded some real classic, real old 40s, 50s, and 60s um, TV recordings and private recordings from this website. So say we go for classic TV from here, on this website, we're gonna look for any file that we can download properly from the past. Let's go for something like old school, vintage, yet funny. There we go, how about um, a classic Coca-Cola commercial? There we go. That shouldn't get me taken off YouTube, let's try that. Now, as mentioned, there is a whole host of ways you can download files on this device. If you do want to download a file, and create an, an, a database of files to control remotely, because remember this does include podcasts as well, click the plus icon. There'll be a pop-up, and you need to first say where do you want your files to go to, the destination. Now I've said the video directory, but of course you can change that to any directory on the NAS. And again, if, you want to, if you've got a localized download file, say someone sent you a link, and again, um, torrent files are a classic example where you've got um, a little initiator file that when you double click it, it will start the download. Now you don't have to do it that way, but if you do have downloaded files, again like torrents, like NZBs, or little compact cabs, this is where you download it. Alternatively, you can enter a URL. That is a link to an online downloading source. How often when you're browsing the internet do you right click something and it goes save link as or save? That link that you have there can be entered in this field for downloading. Case in point, on the right hand side here for this file, we have got a multitude of ways to download this file. For example, if we go to this MPEG, that is the full file. Now if we right click that, we go for save link as or copy link address. So if we go for copy link address and make our way over to this software, we paste it into there, and this says the location of the file we're downloading. 
And again, you can have authentication to double check that everything's safe and secure, but for now, just for the sake of ease and speed, we're not going to do that. So if we click OK, it will then add this file to our download list. Now, while it does that in the background and it verifies that link, we can look at other files. So if we make our way back, I can show you an example of how to download multiple files at once. So say we go for an entire TV show. Let's go for something where there's a collection of files all in one place. Oh, look at that, Miracle on 34th Street, classic. Um, say we go for Sherlock Holmes. Presumably there's a collection of files there. This has now added that file there that's happening in the background. It's just gonna do a quick status update in a second while it checks it. And then the downloads will initiate here. Obviously when you're using stuff like torrents, the speed at which it downloads will differ greatly. If you go to here on this section of the website, you've got a whole host of files there that you can download. And on here, it's already started downloading our file. Now say we want to download lots of files. To download lots of files, we click the plus icon again, and this time we can add all manner of links. So say we go for a big pile of links. Now let's pretend these are all different files. And what you can do is once you've entered a link, click enter there or return, whatever you want to call it. And this gives you the ability to add a list of downloads. So we'll go for a big pile and we're just going to take all of these little individual files and copy them one by one. Now, of course, I'm using the Internet Archive here, but there's a host of different places that you can download files and get them in batches. Or if you use something like a magnet link, that will give you easier access to bunches of files at once. So we've added now four links there and it will add all four of those links in a big list there nice and easily. Now, say you're going to be using a podcast. Now, if you go to RSS feeds, such as um, my personal favorite, Bugle, RSS feed. Sorry, the keyboard is very close to the microphone. And from here, you can enter, if you like downloading podcasts like I do, then you're able, there we go, the list is being created there in the background for each of those files. If you like uh, the podcast like I do, what you can do is then add a feed from a podcast and it will automatically download the very latest episode to your NAS. I did mention this one in a previous video. So again, you have to make sure you're using the right link, which I believe is that one. I haven't done this in a while, but you just need to make sure you get the RSS feed and put that into the download station software. So that's adding all of those files. We'll let that finish. And our first file is already completed from earlier. When a file is completed, you can use a multitude of the options at the top to um, either pause the download, restart the download, cancel the download, or in a case of torrents where peer-to-peer -peer sharing is key, you can choose how you want the system to behave. And again, for RSS feeds, you go right down here to the bottom and you can enter an RSS feed. So if we enter that feed there, which I'm pretty sure isn't going to be the right link, I've probably done that wrong, but we're going to find out. And with the feed, it will give us the latest episode. Look at that, I got it right first time. And at the bottom here, we can see all of those latest episodes of this podcast that I'm looking at here. So I'm pulled the wrong filter up, let's get that there. And again, you can download all, you can download you know, as many or as few as you want. You can change the download directory, or you can add a filter to get rid of certain dates, time, a range, weight of files, and more. And again, you can change podcast go to, to go to a completely different folder on your NAS, and therefore access those from your phone or anything like that when you're on the go. It really is that straightforward. So if we go back to our other downloads, they're all completed. So what we can do is we can either cancel one or all of them, and if you want to remove these from your list, right click and you can pause them, end them or remove them completely. And of course, open up the containing folder. So for now, because they're tasks, we can remove them. And these files will now be waiting for us in our video folder. 
So we head over to there. Once again, I'm sorry for the delay there, but again, that isn't the mouse, that is my PC with the screen recording software. And there we go, there's all our files we've downloaded. And it really, really is that straightforward to download on your DS1019 Plus. If you've got any questions about this, do check me out at nascompares.com. And of course, visit the guides at Span for your NAS. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. That is going to be about cloud backups. Cheerio.